Hi everybody, today I'm going to be painting this pheasant page for my new book, Woodland Watercolour. Um, I'm going to be choosing a kind of a dusky, muted, vintage sort of palette that I've chosen from some Liberty florals I've seen on Pinterest. Um, so I thought it would make a really pretty scene and it would sort of elevate it from being the traditional autumn scene and maybe make it a little bit slightly more summery. So here we go. I'm going to mix my colours by eye. Um, I'll tell you what I'm, I'm using, but um, but it's going to be a bit hit and miss and we'll see how we go. So I'm starting with a little bit of mauve. So that purpley colour with a little bit of permanent rose. I've got a bumblebee trapped in here, if you're wondering what that buzzing noise is. Hopefully he'll be able to get out of the room soon. Right, so we've got a little bit of, and a little bit of this white, this china white. To make it more muted, and I'm going to make a slightly darker version of that colour as well. So just the mauve and the permanent rose together. And to make it a little bit darker, I'm going to use a tiny touch of burnt umber. Um, actually, that's not burnt umber, that's sepia, and a tiny touch of indigo rather than black. There we are, so that would be a warm, darker colour. Let's do a little swatch here. There we go. I'd quite like that to be a little bit more intense, so I'm going to add a bit more colour. There we go, that's what I'm after. And this warmer shade here. Right, I'd probably better let that bee escape, shouldn't I? Hang on. Right, so the bee has escaped. All is well. That's back to the painting. Um, so I'm going to go with those two colours. And I'd quite like a, a little bit of a mustardy yellow colour. So I'm using a little bit of cadmium yellow and a touch of, there we are, touch of burnt umber. That's a lovely um, muted, that's a lovely muted yellow. There we go, I'm pleased with that. And then next I would like a sort of foresty green. Now I'm going to use, oh, my flowers are in the way, a hooker's dark green. I don't know why it's called that, but. I think that's a hooker's green light actually. I think that this one. A hooker's green, yeah, that's a hooker's green light. Let's have a look into the dark. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber. There we go, that's straight away, that was a simple one to do, so. That kind of lovely green. I would call it like a blue in here, so I'm going to go for a, I think, having looked at it, it looks like it's slightly um, warmer. It's got a warm blue. So I'm going to try a little bit of ultramarine with some indigo. Maybe it needs a touch of mauve just to make it slightly purpley. Now let's see, how does that look? See, that's to me is too bright still. I'm going to add a little bit more indigo and a little bit of burnt umber in there. Oh, and now it's kind of got a black colour. Now that's not what I wanted. Let's mix this. That's better. A little bit more blue, this bright blue ultramarine colour. There we are. That's better. And I think to get it into that sort of a bit of, that's right, a bit of white. And it's, there we are, perfect. Now I'd like a lighter version of that. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of blue, some white, 
and I'll just paint that with a tiny touch of brown and indigo and that's perfect. There we are, that lovely light blue colour. Right, now for my pheasants, I think I would like a bit of a sagey green, a lovely sage. So I'm going to use some of the sap green. and some sepia and a little bit of white and I'll paint this really lightly and it will be a lovely sagey kind of colour. Maybe a little bit of indigo actually. See how we go. Now that's a lovely shade. I think that will complement those colours really well. And I really do need a bit more of a burnt orange colour to go with our pheasant's chest and maybe in some of the flowers and things. So I'm going to use a burnt, sien burnt umber and then my trusty burnt sienna. You can see here that's already a lovely bright brownie red colour. I wonder, I might, to mix it up a little bit, add a little bit of a coral colour too. So I think that might be pretty. So I'm going to mix that by using a cadmium pale, a bit of the china white, and hmm, let's see what will make that. Maybe a touch of yellow. There we go. And There we are, that's a pretty colour. Maybe a little bit of pink, actually. There we go. Now that's lovely. I think that will make the palette pop a little bit more. And um, before we get going, and let me think, is there anything else that might be nice? This blue is lovely, but it would also be handy to have a slightly lighter shade of that again maybe something slightly brighter so I'm going to mix just a little bit of china white and a tiny bit of that blue there we go that's it that's the poppy kind of color I was after great so that's my palette I'm going to be working with and it's handy to have it there I don't have to think about mixing other colors and I will just um paint in the design using these um these shades so let's go Right, so I'm going to use this, um, didn't mix that one, did I, one minute. I'm going to use this blue colour for the pheasant's head. I'm going to start here with a pheasant. And rather than the green of traditional um, pheasant's um, head, I'm going to go with a blue. So I'm not using the traditional colours that we might see represented in nature. I'm using my own palette that I think will look pretty um, and make a really nice coherent design. I'm just going to grab some tissue. There we are. So I'm using a new uh, Cockman Winter Newton brush and um, because this is lovely and new it's really pointy and really easy to use so I'm just going to paint in really gently paint in our pheasant's head and you can already see it's not you know it's not traditional but that doesn't matter at all I'm going to use some of this blue across so the idea is to really balance these colors across the whole piece so we don't just have blue here, there might be a little touch of blue down here and, um, and then hopefully it will hold together in a coherent whole. So I'm going to use this coral colour for the pheasant's eyes and the little area around his face. I'm not sure what that is called, but they're normally bright red, so we thought that might be fun. And pretty. Right, next up we have a bit of a red over the chest. 
So I'm going to start with this pink colour and I'm going to blend it down into into this brown colour that I've mixed. Now there is a little bit over under here under the wing of um, of yellow, so I'll use that yellow, I'll blend that yellow in in a second. So I'm just lightly blending these colours together to for a bit of even coverage over the body of the pheasant. And same goes here. Um, I've got a reference image of a pheasant on my screen at the moment, so I can see vaguely where the gradation of colours will go. So that's always quite helpful to have to hand. So I know what a realistic pheasant looks like. Um, then I can choose to make any adjustments myself. But they're just artistic artistic license really so there we go I already really like the softness that I have that isn't traditional um, so normally these wings that come over there are um, like a brownish kind of tone so I'm going to First of all, paint in this slightly yellow area on the side of the pheasant under his under his wing here and blend that in so that brown underneath has dried. I'll just reactivate the watercolour, blend it in slightly. And we can build up the intensity of these colours as we go along. So this is just an initial wash, it doesn't have to stay like this, it can get, you know, like a deeper deeper brown and or a darker blue. So traditionally these wings here are kind of an, a greyish kind of tone. So I'm going to use the light blue that I mixed for these and I'm going to just paint a really light wash over here and then paint in when that's dried add lots of lovely details to the feathers, so I'm going to avoid some of this area here, keep that white. There we go, you can kind of see that's still white. So he's got a slightly crazy blue wing. That is all good. And this bit here is going to be slightly bluer. Because in real life that does look a little bit bluer. And then maybe go with some sagey green towards the tips. And maybe a little bit of brown, we'll see. There we go. So then normally this bit here, is sort of that brownie, that bright brown colour. So we'll paint that in there. I think we're going to need to mix a little bit more of this. So a bit of sepia and a bit of burnt umber to get that really nice warm brown. Oh, I've already used the wrong one. Yeah, there we go. And maybe a touch of white. There we go, and do a little test. Perfect. That's fun, I'm going to do that again on this one here, on this long tail feather. I think these tail feathers are traditionally that lovely rich brown colour. There we go. Right, next up, some of that blue on the wings. I'm running out of that blue already, so I might need to mix some more in a second. I'm going to use this deeper blue to add more details to um, to the area around the face. So I'm going to use a tiny brush to just pick out some of those little feathers. I'm using a almost like a dotting motion to add a few little speckled dots to that. There we go. And 
I think I might use the blue for a little bit of his beak too. There we go. It's a very exotic pheasant, this one. Um, there we go, and I think it might be nice to use this darker blue for lots of dotty details on the wings as well. So let's go for it, those areas that I've left white-ish. Go for it with some more details. There we are, perfect. So I'm pleased with those wings and I think it'd be really nice to pick up some of those colours that we've got on the bird now across oh I put you really make sure <laughs> it's a little tip for you I painted into that lovely delicate peach color with my brush and it had a little bit of the darker brown and now it's made that muddy so I've got to remix it so I'm just quickly pop a little vocabium red a little bit of the rose permanent rose and then we're back again with our color and plenty of white. There we are. I'm going to intensify this little area with a bit more. I'm going to just do some tiny little feathers, feathery dots on here to add interest and texture. To the pheasant's chest so it's not just an entirely flat wash. There we are and I think we probably do need to intensify the colour here. So I've added another layer of that pink and the same on here. There we are, that's a little bit better, isn't it? Right, I think we're going to use some of this yellow for the tail feathers. So the end of the tail feathers are going to be in this lovely yellow, this really subtle mustard yellow colour. Like so. And then maybe some of this yellow into the legs of the pheasant. Right, I'm going to work into those little areas here with some darker colour, but um, not quite yet, we'll do that at the end, I think, when this is all dried. We have some little pheasant feet in that bluey shade. Um, right, so let's move on to some of these beautiful leaves. Um, I'm going to use some of this yellow to really um, add interest across the piece and make sure it's not entirely green. Um, I'm going to use this so it's almost like dried stems of um, here we are, maybe corn or barley or something. There we are. And maybe add a tiny bit of brown into that. So it's like a, like the leaves are turning. They have the yellow tone, but they also have some lovely brown tones creeping in. And don't worry about over, um, painting over the lines or anything. I'm going outside of the lines. I'm not staying in these lines at all. I think it adds a bit of interest and character to the piece and it's not too precise. It is a watercolour painting after all. So there we are, we've got some yellow across there. And to balance that out, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow across here too. Just as easier to do it while it's unpainted. And I'm just gonna do some dots on here. You don't need to be too particular about those, just do some little dots like so, there we are. And we can always add more to make those more intense later on. Um, I'd quite like that little leaf there to be yellow too. 
So you see, while I'm think while I'm painting the piece, I'm really thinking about um, the balance of colours across the whole uh, united uh, piece. So instead of just having yellow here, I'm trying to bring the yellow through into the into the rest of the painting. So maybe a little bit up here might be nice.
So this is my peachy colour. Build up this area a little bit more. Maybe some shading on the collar, on that white kind of collar. Some darker blue there. Maybe some more of this green. Let's mix a little bit more of this cocoa's green. Some just sepia and green mixed together. Maybe a touch of white, actually soften it slightly. There we go, a little swatch. Perfect. Right, so I'm going to be doing one half of the little leaves as darker. Maybe a little in between as well. So some of the background might be nice to be a tiny, a tiny bit green through here. Not too much, just a tiny little bit, and I'm going to knock that back so it's just like a pale green rather than um, ovarian green. I'm going to paint in the stems here. knocking back some of the colours to kind of blend them in using a bit of that brown colour adding um, a bit of shading with this colour to add a bit of three dimensionality to the pheasant's body so he looks a little bit fatter he's not just um, He's not just flat, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> there we go, that might help. I think, there we are, a bit more of that, that brown on the wings. Right, so I think we need a bit of a grey, darker shade on here, don't we? I think maybe just four. I'm going to be lazy, not mix my own black. I'm going to use this lamp black, which has a bit of a warmer tone. And I'm going to paint over these all. I might use a smaller brush, actually. Um, I've got a finer brush here, so I'm going to use a size zero brush, um, which will help with... There we are, that's better. You can still get those little feathery details. They're a bit more pronounced than in the drawing in the book. And I think that's needed, because I think in real life those pheasants do have those kind of spots, don't they, on their chest. There we go, and I think also I would quite like to paint the tips of their wings. So coming in from the dark, I know at the moment they're green, but I thought it might help to have those. It's a slightly darker colour. Kind of greyish tone. Maybe even the Payne's Grey might be nice. Is that indigo or Payne's Grey? No, that's Payne's... Oh, that was indigo, whoops. Um, lamp black, indigo, indigo, there we go. There we are. Oh, and so I did it again. You can see I was mixing, getting some of that yellow and I had a bit of black on my 
um, my brush and it made a mess of my made a mess of my yellow. So I'll probably have to mix a little bit of that again in a second. I might make a slightly lighter, um, brighter green just to do pops here and there. So I think it does need a little bit of that somewhere. Here, maybe there. Perfect. Maybe a little tiny few speckles across the piece. Perfect, and that pink is really poppy, isn't it? Is that a word? I'm not sure that's a word. Right, I think to finish this off, this is going to be a bit bonkers, but I might add a really light pink wash across the top of the sky coming down. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I just feel like it needs more pink. So, let's see. Shall I do it? Oh, okay, I'm going to. Okay, so this is the brush I'm going to use. It's a wash brush. I'm going to dip it in my water. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work or look absolutely terrible. I'm going to mix the pink. Just make sure the pink is right. See, I've got a bit of black in here now and that is not ideal. So I'm going to mix that really carefully um, before I wreck my piece. Let's wipe some of this away. Go for it. Okay. I don't think you should. I wouldn't recommend mixing a colour with a um <laughs> with a wash brush. <laughs> but hey ho. <laughs> there. I want some pinky orange. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of that pinky colour. Nice. There we are, we're nearly there. Um I'm going to use one of my swatch cards so I can test it before I paint in the book. Yes, that's lovely. So I think it will just be really nice to have, you know, a touch of this across the sky. Now I've put some masking fluid coming, but it hasn't arrived yet. And so a sensible thing to do would be to mask this off. Do you know what? I think I am going to mask it off. I'm going to mask this area here, and then I'm going to do a little wash over the top. So I have my masking fluid to hand, and I have an old brush, which I don't mind getting wrecked. I'm going to use this horrid old brush and my masking fluid, give it a shake, make sure it is okay. Yeah, it has dried a little bit, look, I haven't used it in a while, I need to order some more of that. Um, right, I'm going to really quickly mask this off, which means when I paint over it, it will not be pink. So let's see. Be a disaster if this is pink. There we go. Let's just paint that over. And then my blue can't come to any harm. Uh, 
Let's just paint over his head as well to be safe. Okay. I think once I've done this, I'll leave it to dry and then I'm safe to paint over the top. Whatever I'd like. So I'll probably come down to about there. So any painting on Mr. Pheasant's head will not be wrecked. Let's see, I know it looks crazy with this on it, but we'll leave that to dry for the moment. Um, this is what I was using. This is the one I found um, to work really well. So I'm going to seal that up, leave that to dry for a little bit, and then I'm going to do my wash over the top. Wish me luck. Oh. <laughs> Hello, so I've come back and it's all dry. It's been us sitting out in the sun and I've just been testing my colour swatch here. It's lovely pink and I think that's about right. I think it might need a tiny bit more pink in it. Oh, there's a lot of pink. Let's see. Tiny bit more pink. Oh, here we are. And then I'm going to go for it across the top. <laughs> So right, here we go. So as you can see, it's resisting where the, um, where I painted the masking fluid on. Hopefully we'll still get a little bit of a warm autumny glow or, you know, seasonal glow going on. Not too much, just a tiny little hint. There we go. I think that's pretty. Let's do a bit more over the top. A tiny bit more up here. A bit more intense and painting all over the pages. There we go. A tiny bit more yellow. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? It's quite nerve wracking painting over your picture when you spend a while doing something, isn't it? Right, now this gorgeous brush, I love. This is a new brush from Winsor & Newton. Thank you, Winsor & Newton. But it um, does, oh my goodness, what have I done? Okay, so that is an example of what not to do. If you do something like that, I just caught it on the edge of my, um, this clean blotting paper, I just caught it on the edge of my cup where it had a bit of blue blob of paint. Going to just, oh my goodness, still got a blob of blue paint on it. And then I just wiped it on even more. Right, just get it really wet. Clean tissue to the rescue. And then blot, blot away. You can still see residue, but that's fine. There's a tiny little bit of blue, but whoo. Now that was nerve wracking, wasn't it? Oh my goodness. What was I doing? Right, and this isn't quite dark enough for my taste at the top. This isn't quite what I imagined. I'm going to go over it again with this brush. There we are. That's more like it. Move away from that stinking pot, <clears throat> which has all the blue all over it. This is a tip. Clean your brushes and cups, people, or you end up with a disaster station like me. Woo! Right. Okay, let's clean that up over there. We don't need that on there. <clears throat> Hooray! Okay, so I'm going to leave this to dry and then when I take that off, hopefully it will have resisted on the wing a little bit. Um, so it won't be it's just a bit of a subtle, a subtle um, hint. So I'm going to leave that outside in the sunshine again and then come back in and peel off that um, masking fluid. Um, that works an absolute treat, I've discovered. Um, so you can see it's pretty smooth. It's just dried really nicely. Um, let's have a go at removing the masking fluid. Now this is the fun bit. Okay. So just using the tip of your finger, give it a gentle rub.
perfect and you can just finish finally with a few little tiny details um you could do details in the sky you could do some little clouds like so oh i'm not sure i'm gonna like this let's see if this looks rubbish or not no it's okay but it gives a bit more depth to the um the piece. Here we go. A few little sneaky clouds peeking in from the side and that's in the same pinky yellow tone that I did the wash in. I think that helps. A few more over here maybe. Coming from behind his wing. Maybe I should have done this before I took the masking fluid off. <laughs> Never mind. Um, here we go. There's some lines on here. Great. And I think, to finish off, I might do a few little details on his wing. Because I thought that would be... Just why not? It's looking a bit plain at the moment. And that texture adds interest to the wing. There we go. Tiny bit more of a highlight here. And a tiny bit more, just to emphasise that yellow on here. And a teeny tiny bit of burnt sienna, which I'm going to mix into the edge of my pink here. There we go, so just intensifying the colours on the pheasant, on the pheasant's wings, on his body, just lifts it a little bit, gives it a bit of, it zhuzhes it up a bit, is that a word, zhuzh, there we go. Problem is, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I don't know if you've noticed, but I can't stop when it's dark, I want to make it nicer and nicer. And um, and it's really fun to paint in this book. <laughs> I'm just really enjoying using this colouring book. It's like, I know I've done the work already, so it's just the fun bit without um, having to think about composition. Um, it's the pure colour that's enjoyable. Um, right, just a tiny bit down here, just to give his body definition. See, Whoop. there we go, and just maybe a tiny, <laughs> you keep thinking I'm finished and I haven't. <laughs> right, there's a tiny bit under here, and <laughs> this tiny bit under his chin, I think it might be nice to just define that a bit more. I am going to finish in a second, I promise, it's just these few tiny little details that are really enjoyable to pop on. Should I stop now? I need someone to tell me, no, put the paintbrush down, paintbrush down. See, no, left to my own devices, I would still do a lot more work on this. But see, I quite like, rather than that pink, I quite like that brown coming through. There we go. I promise I am stopping. There we go. Et voila. Pheasants in the hedgerow in a lovely uh, dusky palette.